Hello, welcome to Color All the Things with me, Melissa. Um, I have a new book that I got yesterday. Um, I put up on Instagram if people wanted a flip through or not. Majority said yes, a few said no, but I don't know if that meant just for Instagram or, or what have you. So I'm going to do a flip through. Um, I was entirely enabled uh, by Belinda. Um, uh, so I had to buy this book and now I have the rest of them in my cart. I have not colored in it yet, um, but I plan to soon. Um, so this is a hardback book, if you can hear, but it is gorgeous. Let me see. Of course, they're all going to stay. This is a little thinner than I had expected. I don't know if you can tell. Like pencil. It's like pencil width. Um, I don't know why I expected it to be thicker. I just did because I'm weird and I expect things that life does not bring. So you have this nice tealy blue water color paper. And then you have the beginning page. Uh, the paper isn't super thick, but it's not bad. Um, it's m heavier than copy paper. This is not a Create Space uh, printed book, which is nice. I have not broken this book in, so pardon me. There we go. So it gives a little um, information about... Uh, Tim Jeff and uh, how he came about the idea for these books, the series of books, a uh, little bit of acknowledge acknowledgments, uh, which includes acknowledgments to uh, the colorists. So that's really cool. Um, and on every one of these kind of like intro pages is something to color, which I think is also very cool. Uh, let's see if I can there we go there's a good focus so here in this little corner is a list of all of the animals in the bottom left corner uh, is a number which corresponds so you can go through and match up and Google search if you want to do um, uh, hyper realistic I mean they're hyper realistic uh, drawings so me personally I would do hyper realistic colors uh, so I would find the colors for these this looks like a pass uh, my dad fished up enough of those to know I am NOT going to reference this I will just flip through um, and let you guys do that otherwise I'll be flipping back and forth and that's just ridiculous um, some of them are letter some of them are portrait uh, this is the African wild dog and I've got that one memorized hopefully I don't have to switch back and forth too much these little guys are cute I think this is gorgeous. You even get the uh, anemones that the clownfish nestle inside for uh, protection. Which I think is very nice. A lot to color on that one. Beautiful bird. And you can just see all the detail that's all in here. Very pretty. Cute guy. I'm not going to spin it. That'll just make me and you dizzy. I mean, look at that. Oh, my cat has found a moth that's bugging her. After this, after the uh, video, I'll, I'll show off what I've been coloring. So if you want to stick around for that. Cute little primate. 
These are all one-sided. There is nothing. There is nothing on the other side. So you can use your markers. You can use your pencils, Copics, any alcohol markers, watercolor, um, whatever floats your boat. That just it's just amazing. So much time put into this. The lizards. This is really what I bought these for, was for the lizards. Um, I dig lizards. Um, my oldest digs lizards too, so what I really wanted to do, because these are one-sided, I wanted to color her, probably the chameleon in here, and then frame it and mount it in her room. Uh, and, you know, if she likes all the lizards, then I will just do that with all the lizards. Um, oh, this is that one bird that can't fly. Alright, now I've got to go back and look. So, number 11. The kakapo. So, it, it can't fly. It is a flightless bird. And lives on the forest floor. I think it's a rainforest. I should know this one too. I'm going to call it a kiwi. Oh, look at that detail. So cool. I could really just color these and frame them and just put them up because, oh my gosh, you know? And then we would just have like menagerie in my house of uh, colored animal photos which would be cool which would be cool I would love it honestly if Tim Jeff would come up with like a poster size of some animals I think that would be super duper cool oh look at the detail on that I would I would dig the heck out of a poster size lizard or something or a whale look at that all the barnacles and stuff that they get on them too it's amazing goat eyes always freak me out man look at that that crab that detail and the sea turtle from the from the cover Oh, this is the lizard um, that Belinda was coloring that I was like, oh no, I have to buy it. Some sort of spiny guy. A wolf. I'm only getting one page, yes. Here is the chameleon that I would love. It's a painted chameleon, I think it's called. And I would love to color this and put this up on my daughter's wall and frame it. She loves chameleons, but we haven't bought one because that's a lot of work. <gasps> I didn't see this. Look at that. That's super cool. And then this horse. So pretty. So that is the end of the book. That is the last 25 pages. And then you have that nice blue cover. I didn't see the little guy back here. So very cool, a very cute book, very realistic book. Um, yeah, I have so much I want to do. Like now I want the rest, all the other three of them, which are in my cart, and hopefully I can get those soon. Um, but that was Tim Jeff's Intricate Animals, Intricate Ink Animals in Detail, Volume 4. That Say that ten times fast. Um, I'm super, I'm super pleased. Uh, I will probably try my polychromos in here because that's what I saw Belinda working with and it looked amazing. Also, I haven't played with my polychromos in forever and so I'm feeling like they need some love. So, uh, if you came just for the flip through, that's it for the flip through. If you came also for the sneak peek on the picture 
I was coloring in the last video. Here it is. Um, let me see if I can zoom out. No. I've got this too close. So I have done the purple flowers and started on the leaves. And I've done the background here. So this was um, the watercolor Erdo Softs. And that was 156-5, uh, and then the sepia, the 156-76. Um, right, that is the sepia, right? 7677. So that has been what I've been working on. Um, I did go through and add the pencil into here. So that has been added. Um, I'm actually thinking the frame will be purple and then inside here will be greens that's that's where i'm rolling with that um and i might do a, a yellow sunflower um and then i was gonna do red mushrooms give a nice pop um these i was gonna do yellow orange Pansy, pansies, I think those are, I have to look it up. I think those are pansies. These I was going to do last because I was going to take my, my, my twin tip felt pen markers and see this blue right here, this beautiful little blue, light blue. That's what I was going to color them with, but it depends on how the background turns out because the background, I have two other watercolor pencils, um, that I want to use and one of them is like a greeny blue so 156-38 and then a turquoisey blue which is 156-35 and so I was going to do out from here the ooh, oops um that was not a brilliant thing you just did Melissa where are all of my erasers Melissa oh my goodness there we go. So I was going to do the darker up here. I was going to do a nice uh, cloud or two here and then the lighter blue into the green down here. And so uh, that is that is my plan for that. I'm hoping to get far enough along that the next video I record for this will be kind of either finishing it up or close to finishing it up um, because I, I want you guys to see how this is going. I'm really digging the Ergo Softs. I've got um, the green down here which is a really cool um, combo color thing. So I have my normal sepia, the 157-77 um, and then the main color I've been putting on the green part here is the 157-57 which is kind of like an olivey green um, the center part right here which is more like a yellow olive uh, is 157-56 and then coming out from the olive green I'm actually using this bright green the 157-50 and for some of the shadowy like right in here right in here I've been using this kind of like a uh, tanny color uh, 157-49 so for all these purple flowers that is going to be the greens that I use for that um, and then these ferns and this other stuff is probably going to be more of a greeny green where it's going to be this and then the other um, non-blue greens I don't even know how to explain it but hopefully I'll be on a stream to explain it to you I, I may go with these ferns back to the color I did for these for the greens for those um, I did put some little uh, white highlights in, in here oh you can't really see that can you there you go so little white dots there there were black dots I covered them over with a white gel pen I'm not a big gel pen user so I use it very very sparingly um, hopefully I will be able to get more of this done, but thank you guys, and have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.